Good evening everyone, how are we doing? Oh, I've broken Starfleet Boy already. Here we go, how are we doing everyone? Welcome, welcome, welcome. I clicked onto Discord to unmute you and immediately broke the screen. I was like, nice, oh, we've done it perfectly already. <laughs> <laughs> Hello everyone, welcome to Trek Central Live. It's been ages since we've sat down, ages since we've sat down to do a live stream. Just me and you specifically, but also on the Trek Central channel as well. It has been quite some time, but Starfleet Boy, how are you doing? It's great to have you back. Thank you. I'm doing great. And it's great to be back here. It's so much fun. Uh, this is such a great time in Star Trek. We're in this, uh, I like the expression, we're in the, the Latinum age of Star Trek, Ooh. if you will. <laughs> Ooh, I've not yes. heard that one before. <laughs> Latinum age, yeah. <laughs> the Latinum age of Star Trek, yeah. Oh, I just so... keep thinking of Quark all the time now. Like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh the Latinum age. Yeah, what's, what's the next, what would you call the next age? What's one What's one thing better than Latinum? Latinum? Let's yeah. see. What did you get? The Omega like... Particle Age. I don't know. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Perfection. <laughs> yeah, <it's> perfect, full <laughs> perfection. We'll have assimilated the whole planet to Star Trek. <laughs> <laughs> it's only the way. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Trek Central Live. I am, of course, your host, Captain Jack, the director of Trek Central. It's been ages since you've been here, like we said. We're super happy to have all of you back as well. And actually, uh, talking about Star Trek, and we can't wait to share the conversation with you answer your questions ask you questions as well and also get many more special guests back here on the live streams we do is week by week we have now got 10 weeks actually nine weeks of star trek strange new worlds which is uh pretty exciting i'm pretty sure it's probably another show quickly happening after that as well given how like busy the star trek schedule is right now oh <laughs> you know it's gonna be great it's true i don't know if i'll ever sleep again though yes <laughs> i look forward basically like to getting up at like thursdays at 7 a.m catch the episode of ATM and immediately get I'm usually me and Dom are up super early to start reviewing it and doing everything else like so the US gets it like uh, I think West Coast gets it like midnight East Coast yeah, gets it like somewhere ones, in the morning yeah. and then also UK guys get it at like eight o'clock which is not the end of the world like it encouraged me to get up and have like a normal work-life balance but still first is a long day sometimes <laughs> especially <laughs> so this true. week like we have both Star Trek Strange New Worlds and Picard and that was fantastic like yeah and that's what we're gonna be discussing today um, so Starfleet Boy, so hell, obviously if people haven't uh, known of your channel before, do you want to give a quick introduction as you're obviously joining Team Trek Central as one of the new live hosts to work alongside me. So tell us about yourself. Go and advertise the whole place. Thank you. Well, I'm a big time Trekkie. I've, uh, I was introduced when I was a, a, a kid and uh, I've always loved it. It's, it's kind of uh, an obsession of mine. And uh, so a few years ago, I you know, I decided to start a YouTube channel and it's called Starfleet Boy. And then it went from there. I'm on Twitter, on Instagram, on Facebook, all the things. So just search for Starfleet Boy. But my basic deal is just like you and everyone else, Jack, I just celebrate this thing that I love so much. I just love talking about it, getting into the minutiae, like, you know, the details, like finding out the behind the scenes stuff, like every aspect of Star Trek is something I'm interested in. And I love talking about it. So thank you for having me. And I'm so excited to be part of the Trek Central team. I've admired you all for so long. You guys do such a great thing for fans you guys are a bastion of community and like you know just goodwill uh overall i, I appreciate what you all are doing and it was nice to to it's it's nice to always been you know invited and now it's nice to be part of the team so thank you jack it's a pleasure we're super excited to have you on board a team as well and like i say one of the big things we do at trek central is you know be a bastion sort of fan community and also do a lot of fan projects recently announced um we are working with um one of the amazing star trek artists d to work on a tng 35 project we're sponsoring that and helping him with some of the technical study details and there'll be more on our website soon about that but you can head to his twitter profile i think if tg's in the chat she might drop a link uh, or dom one of the lovely moderators team trek central i'm a chat by everyone say hello uh, and we're working on that but also we've got pride month coming up and i really want to do some great content um for pride as the i remember I'm the lgbt community myself uh so i really yeah. want to yeah this is a great <laughs> yeah, i've got one as well now I've got... <laughs> we just gained up a stream well, hey um so yeah i really want to do some great content for pride month um and i think that'd be a great awesome. idea to like you know champion the trek central brand in doing some fantastic stuff like that um so yeah but anyway today we are talking about obviously strange doors and Picard. but before we do that i wanted to quickly touch on star trek mission chicago because you went out to that which was in it was in i was about to ask you where it was but it was in chicago <laughs> funnily enough it was in april <laughs> <laughs> that's what i probably meant to ask yeah uh, obviously it was only last month it seems like an age ago already time is moving time is broken in real life because time is moving so fast <laughs> yeah how was the event overall like tell us how was it 
you know, uh, as a as a first time, you know, long time Trekkie, first time attender uh, <laughs> to a Star Trek convention, it was pretty awesome for me. Um, I definitely enjoyed it a lot. Uh, when I talked to folks that have been to Star Trek uh, Las Vegas and stuff like that, there were definitely some opportunities pointed out. But just for me, it was really great. It was fun to see the stars in person and the producers and writers and uh, check out like all the different uh, merchandise that was available. I, I certainly uh, broke my bank. Uh, <laughs> Did you get a Geordie what? Bear, though? Did you get a Geordie Bear? I did get the Geordie He's off. To, he's too far for me to reach without breaking my headphones <laughs> right now. But yeah, he's uh, he's in my... Uh, he's. I, it's the first time I've had a teddy bear in my bed since I was a kid, <laughs> I think. So, <laughs> whatever. My friends keep getting, like like plushies for me i've now got like a charmander one in the corner of my room they keep getting me pokemon ones for like birthdays and christmas i've got a random a friend kendra who helps on one of the other channels just got me a bulbasaur out of the blue the other day and i'm like okay thanks i've got that in my room now it's great yeah, it's awesome i don't mind adult adult teddy bears are great <laughs> hey i mean i think anyone of any age can have teddy bears to be fair bears, yeah exactly true. you know the, it's a bloody hard world out there if you want a teddy bear you crack on is my my prerogative <laughs> the whole thing <laughs> But yeah, um, yeah. Bear is cool, and and just uh, overall, I think uh, I think next year is going to be really great in Seattle. I think they're going to take the mm. feedback that they got from this one, and 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 obviously improve it. And I think there's really good things ahead for Star Trek uh, conventions. I hope they uh, travel to even more cities uh, that are yes. you know not just the big ones. And I hope they go to some small towns too, because I'd like to personally, as a fan with this rotation model, what's exciting is going to places I've never been to. So that's yeah. going to be a neat thing as well. I really hope at some point they potentially um, take mission or Star Trek missions abroad as well, like an away mission, even like a subset. Oh, I love that. It could be really great, like away mission Paris. That'd be great or something like that, or, you know, somewhere else, like away mission London. Like, obviously, yeah, we do have yeah. Destination Star Trek over here in the UK, which is, you know, a really good event for uh, UK and European fans. And we've got DST in Germany as well, um, which I think is still going ahead this year. I know we're, Team Trek Central will, should, cross fingers, should be at London, you know, all things planned. Uh, as I can't wait to catch up with Trek community. And this is something we were talking about before we got live, me and So Harold just having a full on like talk about event stuff. We were saying Mission Chicago to some fans felt like it wasn't the best event. But I was saying like one thing for Star Trek events is people go there for the community. It doesn't matter yeah. which stars turning up, they're all great anyway, regardless who just turns up. It doesn't matter which vendor is there, if it's Hero Collector, Star Trek Online, or the small guys uh, who are fantastic. But the community, one thing I love doing with Star Trek events is when we did DST last year, Immediately was on my birthday as well, which is a really convenient, also inconvenient, as I was slightly hungover. Um, but also just having people come up and go, oh, you guys are Trek Central. I love your videos. I love your content. I was really moved by it because I've been a YouTuber for like five, ten years, something stupid like that. So I've been to events where people come up and go, oh, aren't you such and such? I'm like, y maybe. Um, but having people come up with like multiple people go, oh, you're Team Trek Central. I love what you're doing. Fantastic. And like, it's not even just that, just hanging out in a bar and talking Star Trek and having a laugh with mates. Uh, one of my assistants who sort of came with us for DST, Tom, he's not a main part of the team, but he came to give me a hand. And we were just sat in a bar late at night having one too many. And we got chatting to this couple who were like older than us, but we wouldn't, not our typical age groups, wouldn't typically go talk to them. But honestly, it was a guy and his wife, and he mentioned like doing all this stuff. And honestly, it's just great to have that sort of conversation. And I think that's one thing Star Trek events do really well, is no matter your background, no matter your age, whatever, whoever you are, somebody's there to chat. And A, that's a very core cool message of Star Trek but also a very cool thing for events. I think you'd agree as well. I agree 100%. That's actually, you know, one of the more memorable things, one of the most memorable things about this trip to Chicago and, and this first mission for me is the fact that, like, we had meetups with friends and fans who listen to our content or watch our content and stuff like that. So between myself, uh, uh, Text Trek and Trek on the Tube, we got to meet a bunch of folks and and it was the coolest thing also is, like, folks that you've been talking to online for, like, years, you just meet them. It's oh, like, yeah. It's it's like instant like rapport and stuff mm. there's no awkwardness it was just wonderful it's like meeting friends for it's like pen pals like back in the day you know you you guys have correspondences for like so long and then you meet in person it's like no big deal it's just a matter of like for me the, the fixation was how tall everyone was like i was like <laughs> oh you're taller than i imagined you're taller than i imagined you know i always like get that because like, people expect <laughs> me like some i think it's when you're youtube people expect you to be like some six foot six nordic giant <laughs> i am like five 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 six on a good day so people see me go I didn't expect that. I'm like, well, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> it's like the greatest saying. Short too, so yeah, I'm only five <laughs> seven, so I'm not too much taller than you. But yeah, <laughs> everyone's taller than me. But yeah, justice for our short kings. <laughs> 
meeting essentially friends in person and, and, and having a few days of just like no responsibilities, you know, hopefully mm. for folks, you know, check out a work and go to these things and fully immerse themselves. And it was just, just a lot of fun. Lots of fun. Definitely. It was, um, it was fantastic. Uh, by the way, thank you to everyone joining us in the chat. By the way, there's 83 of you right now. Make sure to like on the stream. It's greatly appreciated. But if yeah. you've got a question about anything you want to discuss today, uh, just feel free to ask it. And we're going to do a bit of a Q&A section halfway through the stream. We're about to jump in. I think we're going to talk about Star Trek Picard first because uh, at the season two final, and then we'll talk about Strangely Worlds. If you've got a question, drop it in the chat, and we'll keep an eye at both our lovely moderators here this evening. Alternatively, you can tweet them to us as well. It's at the Trek Central on Twitter, uh, or send it anywhere, and we'll be sure to answer those. So yeah, why don't we talk about Star Trek Picard's season two final? Because, wow, what an interesting season. Immediately, yeah, I have actually... to say, starships. <laughs> ahead, Thank sorry. Christ, we've got new starships. <laughs> yes. New starships that look like they fit in the era right? Mwah, like chef's it, kiss. it was like beautiful yeah it's so cool especially that excelsior oh my gosh oh. i mean the stargazer is like the one that i'm i'm pining for the most uh i was like enterprise who uh <laughs> <laughs> we got a software now we got a software it was great that's true but yeah there was a, there was sovereign representation there were all kinds of stuff and then it's cool to see because i've always thought i haven't played sto yet i don't have a pc and it's kind of tough to play on mac mm. but i've always wanted to play sto and i always check out the new ships whenever yeah. they you know launch them and stuff like that and I, I think they they do a really great job with their ideas and the aesthetic and, and everything else so it was really cool to get sto ships uh in there as well like what is that like kind of the the um the ross class i believe it is yes and that was the like that. uh yeah, the ross it. class was the galaxy looking one is galaxy class looking yeah. one. So ross class yeah exactly or quite a few and I, I had a list around here ages ago i, can't, I don't know where it is now but it's, it's somewhere around here i have a list of stuff so <laughs> <laughs> the internet's definitely broken it down there's a cool guy named jurg hildebrand who uh yes, tweets yeah. like all the details and so he's got a, a breakdown of all the classes and everything that were on there if you want to check it out but yeah it's very cool to see all that and just having a space anomaly just mm. it was just like yeah it was a wild cool thing but uh as far as finales go i was kind of you know, uh, I, I generally, I enjoyed this season a lot. Uh, I think I even enjoyed it more than uh, season one, but it was a lot of ups and downs and it was a lot of questions. And I do think that overall they landed it with the finale. I mean, it's not, Picard season two is not without its problems, yes. but it's certainly, I think for me, for this fan of of, of that era and of, of Jean-Luc and everything, I think overall I would say it delivered what I wanted out of it and, and even surprised me in a few ways, which was cool. One of the things I really liked, especially with episode one, was that sort of classic Star Trek feel in a sense. But I was like, oh, there's some sort of spatial anomaly. A ship's been almost blown up. Bye bye, Akira. Quickly, Rios, go solve it. And it was just that sort of classic feeling of like, right, we're going to get the band back together and go solve a problem. It's very much typical Star Trek. Um, but thinking about the season two final, uh, I think it was an all right episode, to be fair. I think, unfortunately, it became a little bit predictable because we sort of knew what was going to happen, in a sense. But yeah. there's still some bits here and now I didn't expect to happen. Um, obviously, by the way, for people watching, slight spoilers. So be warned, we will be touching on the final. So don't say we didn't tell you. Uh, and we'll warn you before we get on to Strange New Worlds again, by the way, is so that'll be spoiler. But if you want to watch Picard of us, you know, we're welcome to. But yeah, the ending of it. Um, but, oh, before I get to it, by the way, did you see Terry Matlas's tweet about season two and three with the Starship Bridge? Yes. Yes. Enterprise. Yes. I'm going to start the trend don't... again. Enterprise <laughs> F. Hmm? Anybody? Odyssey class? I know Dom's currently yeah. just dying when I said that, but... <laughs> I mean, I I definitely want to see uh, the uh, Enterprise E have one last hurrah, but also I have, like, the Odyssey class. It's a gorgeous ship, so yes. if this is their way of introducing her, that would be cool. I don't think we can have two shows focused on the Enterprise, so I don't think there's going to be a spin-off on the Enterprise F yeah. anytime soon. So it would be a nice uh, fan, like a little fan service for the fans who are, you know who really appreciated another. And I guess another nod to to STO because wasn't she? Yeah, yeah. Uh, wasn't yeah? That was another nod. That so the Enterprise nice nod, F, yeah. which is an Odyssey class starship, is obviously a successor to the Sovereign class Enterprise E, and it's sort of the next Enterprise, and it is a fan design as well. I believe. I think, I think it was, was it Adam Isle who designed it. No, that might be the Titan. No, no, that's Sean Tongo. Um, the, yeah, I think it's Adam Isle who designed the Enterprise F. And obviously that was a fan design, so a competition to design the next Enterprise. That's right. Yeah, and like, that's it's right. fantastic. Like, I love, personally, I love the Odyssey class. It's also a really good name. Odyssey is like, oh, that's just like pure Star Trek for me. 
Oh, yeah. yeah, it also kind of it kind of like if they were to do like down the line, like, you know, a series set in the 25th century, I don't think it'll be on the Enterprise. But if they were to do it, it's a great follow up to Galaxy class, Odyssey class, you know, like it has oh, that yeah. same vibe to it, like this, like, you know, this like regalness, if you will, <laughs> Just kicks ass and gets the job done. Like, I would love yeah. that. <laughs> exactly but she's also on an odyssey she's on a, a oh, sort yeah. of uh, explore you know so it's pretty cool yeah <laughs> i just love that fleet sequence in picard season two because it redeemed the inquiry class as well like that ship was there it wasn't like hey we're not getting rid of this like it was there right it looked beautiful i think the zheng he was there itself um which is pretty cool i'd have to double check the fleet statistics again or i know dave blast who is a fantastic individual by the way and a massive shout out to dave yeah. Him and his team have done great work, much like most of the creators of Picard uh, have done, you know, all of them, actually, fantastic work. But him tweeting out all his images of the ships look beautiful. I think, like, obviously, Doug Drex has helped with some of them. I think John Eves has done some of them as well. Um, they're all looking beautiful. I don't have any to hand, unfortunately. I, know, I ran past some stored away yesterday, um, but I'm pretty sure Zeng Hei was there. I know Dom's in the chat. He might confirm if it was, but... <laughs> Dom, let us know. But the the speaking of Dave Blast and Terry Metalis, but mainly Dave Blast, the access that we've had as fans to mm. like in background information and production information and just like he like when uh when the first episode launched like shortly after he like gave us these beautiful productions uh uh designs yeah. of all the ships and like you know some information about them we even saw things like how um i forget what the class of ship is but we got like uh little uh furtherances of even classic characters like uhura for example like we find out that she was captain of her own ship and that uh and that she had even i mean, we don't know how this will play into anything but apparently she left the galaxy and like did a little five-year mission and explored outside of our galaxy yeah so i don't know how that you know i don't know what that all will play out to maybe we'll see that in the novels okay i do uh, have a list of the, like i that. have a list of the <laughs> ships here um oh, right on <laughs> so one of these zheng he classes or inquiry classes was called the rushka rush to zaz i don't know how you pronounce it i know someone's probably dying i've just pronounced it terribly wrong that was designed by <laughs> johnny's and modeled by tobias witcher um i'm sorry if i'm butchering his names by the way i'm terrible pronunciation I, I, wanna, here, so it's all right. this, <laughs> I really want to know if saying hey was here it was okay yeah so there was about four or five in classes in uss classes, yeah uss saying hey was there designed by johnny's model by tobias richer ncc 86505 and there you go it's looking oh, nice. absolutely beautiful yeah all of these been tweeted out by um dave blast by the way through his twitter but i imagine memory alpha currently has a list of those and any other good trek uh resources as well so you can go and view them which is really nice as we had the akira yeah. there it got blown up as well <laughs> <laughs> there's apparently um there are apparently eight sovereign classes in the first episode and only like four or something yeah. like in the last episode so, so I, my guess is some of the ships actually warped back that were just that they were disabled for some reason i think and they so yeah it, yeah and stuff like that but yeah it was pretty cool to oh, see yeah, that dom just said the formation. uss rushed as have you on a planet do you have a good planet again in the chat is named after a famous klingon which is really cool very nice uh so it would probably be Rustash. Oh, I like that one. S somebody please clip that in the chat right now. Just tweet that later. TJ Dom, will clip that. I'm starfleet boy nailing a pronunciation. Honestly, I reckon for a live stream one day, when we've got an off day and nothing to do, we should try and pronounce the hardest, like, we should get everybody on, all our friends, and try and pronounce the hardest, like, Star Trek stuff. I'd be out instantly. Whoever gets, That's like, we would do points, yeah. Because the clips out of that would be hilarious. Like, you know what I mean? I agree. <laughs> but uh yeah that that was a epic part what what was your favorite part of uh the finale uh jack that's a really hard one um honestly i think for the emotional factor it has to be the goodbye hug between q and picard but also i i quite like the wesley return scene like i don't know why it yeah. just struck a chord i was like it's like the same personally like one of the mo uh, most emotional scenes for me is in season one when we meet uh marina says diana troy and you know john freaks william reich again i well that's not really an emotional scene i'd argue i found it quite touching so much like when will wheaton came back as wesley crusher it really hit me there and i was like damn like i i love this like it's really nice to have him back. and it's just so homely because like, i've never left the next gen and that was probably one of my best moments it was yeah, cool. probably. I, you know, and it was actually one of the few surprises, right? Yeah. Like I had no. I mean, William, well, I... he's so clever. <laughs> <laughs> we say surprises, but uh... <laughs> <laughs> so for disclaimer, I'm wondering. I Paramount hate me currently, probably because I did a lovely article in the week going, "Is Will Wheaton about to? Is always Wesley Crusher about to return?" 
All I'm saying is, who bloody released the soundtrack a week early? You gave it away when one of the tracks was called The Traveller. So naturally, yeah. me would... Just go, I wrote the whole article. That article is most viewed on the website right now. I don't mind sharing that. Nice. That was almost our highest viewed article on the site right now. Like, I didn't think it would do that well. But yeah, go on. You was going to say... No, that's rad. I actually listened to the soundtrack without looking at the track, so I actually didn't know. But it was Fantastic. actually to my detriment because one of the things... So since you heard the tra the soundtrack before the episode came out... One of the things I had this really wild idea because since they played the first contact theme in the in the subsequent yes, track, yeah. I was like, oh, for sure, this means like there's gonna be like more, there's gonna be like cameos or there, you know, he's gonna see you know someone like Jordy or Warp or you know someone else. So that's where I thought I didn't think I never thought Wesley because I was actually thrown off by his article that he wrote about. Like, yeah, where exactly. He says, I'm not, Right, not returning, and then he even wrote a whole scene about yeah. he kind of gave and it to basically, us. It was basically yeah. that scene. <laughs> I, I loved it's it though, true. like, yeah. <laughs> but uh, I have to agree with you that, like, you know, uh, despite any incongru incongruities or any other fallbacks, uh, what made the finale so special for me was watching, um, you know, both Will Wheaton's uh, scene, but more especially uh, John Delancey's scene, all the way from the solarium when, you know, they're sitting in the chairs. And, and one of the things that was really striking to me is just how simple it was. It was really cool. Someone pointed this out on the internet, too, is that, like, in a weird way, like, the, it paralleled how when Jean-Luc was saying goodbye, to data in season one they were all both, yes. they were both sitting across from each other uh in chairs and so it was the same thing with q here and i just lost it crying i mean like the whole thing like this is an antagonist frenemy if you will i guess we could call him for 30 years and and like that you know the you know again there's still some unanswered questions about the overall intentions and motivations of yeah. q but just like here and at least for me but just here in that moment just seeing that touching scene and like what q wanted for for Jean-Luc and like what Jean-Luc was able to give him back and just like I'm getting goosebumps just talking about it right now but like beautiful moment and then his gift of course the snap of the fingers I mean that, that was something I certainly predicted is that's you know one of the theories I had was it'll be a snap of a finger and everyone will be back but I do like that there were still surprises even though it was a predictable thing there were still some surprises especially in the way that it played out and the way it was acted and performed so yeah I have to agree with you on that that's probably my favorite part of the episode I quite liked the touching moment, obviously bringing back Elnor as well. Like, I'm not completely writing him out of it, which is pretty good. Like, bringing him back to restoring him. Um, and also Rios' send-off as well. I'm, I've got mixed feelings over Rios departing. And it's something we'll touch on in a second. Um, but I like how he resolved the story. I personally would have wished Rios returned to us and was the, you know, de facto commander of the Stargazer. Because I think, thanks to Terry's tweet, it doesn't look like the Stargazer may be the core focus of, you know, season three. We don't know yet, but if this is another ship bridge we're on, which is just the typical Star Trek redress, then we all still could have been the commander of a Stargate or captain of a Stargazer and made cameos. Like even if Santiago couldn't be in every episode, then they could have had yeah. like cameos, him like swooping in to save the day or stuff like that or meeting up with him. But yeah, I don't know. But they ran off the story well. I like how he stayed behind. Obviously, Guyan had a picture of him in the bar. I was tempted to go back to episode one and see if that picture's in the bar. I don't think it's it will not, be. It's, it's not. We okay. don't see the, Which it's is time there, would change, probably, wouldn't it? We don't see that wall. Yeah, we don't and also see that time, particular wall. Time, would te time is such a weird construct, but if it... Yeah, because <laughs> if you had to go back in time to create that future, it wouldn't it's technically true. be... But also technically it still would be... I don't know. I, I don't like time travel. It's confusing. That's the part where, where Janeway's like, oh, time gives me such a... <laughs> time travel gives me such a headache. It's true. I think that like Hugh's line about time is... Or actually, Rios's line about time is a funny thing just yeah. says everything you need to know about how the time shenanigans work it's like don't think too hard about it but if you do it actually does work out in weird way i mean i've really thought about this like you know us being doctor who fans like we've been exposed yeah. to a lot of timey wimey stuff you know like <laughs> concepts and i think uh some of those things could definitely apply here and now i'm really i'm really curious now to watch the 12 monkey series because i think i know that terry metallis uh admitted that he was only involved uh you know a little bit in the season he wasn't as involved in the season as he is in season three in terms of you know the day-to-day -day that akiva goldsman really took on the lion's share of the work uh for this season but i do think that like his ideas about time travel and stuff like that are pretty co cool and i think that there were even some interesting i don't know if they were on purpose or not like there were like back to the future-y kind of time travel things going on you know there as well and that's fitting because you had leah thompson uh directing and stuff yes like that. yeah so, that was great so, yeah. i think our like our <laughs> of writers and directors this um 
this season has been really good to be fair like so i think yeah, um yeah. kirsten beer wrote uh one of the episodes herself i think she wrote episode seven or eight i can't remember off the top of my head but she wrote one of them which is great and obviously kirsten beer well known for her star trek voyager post return uh novels which are fantastic um which are my ad so yeah, right on. Exactly. So, yeah, so I think that, like, uh, I'm excited to rewatch the season because the first time watching it, you know, uh, it's more to get on, you know, fresh, you know, get on there on that stream and talk about, like, all the details and how it ties into lore. But now I guess I can watch it with, like, a finer tooth comb and just kind of, like, answer a lot of these questions. So hopefully, you know, hopefully this when I've when I've binged it, I won't have all the anticipation of what's going to happen next week, you know, uh, and I'll be able to, like, see the season a little better and i do think it will i have a feeling uh it's going to read a lot better uh overall as as things tend to do totally agree with you i, I yeah i think i said this as well uh in our video review for tc i was like i think if i watch the whole of um the whole of the season like all together like a binge i might like it a bit more because the worst thing for me is there's some like inconvenient cliffhangers for season two which just yeah. I think after about five, six, and seven, I was like, oh, God, just get to the point, if that makes sense. That, that makes sense really. I don't mean it in a bad way, but I was like, come on, just you know, I, I live for big story details. So when we started getting towards episode eight and episode nine, I was like, yeah, give me more of this. And when Q started dropping hints he was dying, I'm like, great, main plot point, I'm grabbed onto this, let's go more. But the fact that then it had to drag out more and more, I was like, oh come on, please. <laughs> just I give, agree. give I me like that, a sense I... of holding us there, weren't they? But yeah, and I like what your term about inconvenient cliffhangers, that kind of nails it. It's, they were inconvenient. Like, I didn't think they were like, I think the cliffhangers were an opportunity definitely this season. Uh, you know, a show uh, I think that we both love, uh, you, you, you love the books, is uh, The Expanse. They do a really good job of convenient cliffhangers, <laughs> like I think, you know, and I think Star Trek needs to take a little cue. Uh, next time you do like this kind of cliffhanger model, take a cue from The Expanse and make them like not too, not too inconvenient yeah like make them a little bit more like interesting you know hold us on it a little bit better like yeah. i think like i i don't want to critique like akiva or terry too much but one of the things that obviously this season two happened was um obviously terry oversaw up until episode five and then jumped to season three where akiva took over and i think when you mix um you know when you mix like um showrunners sometimes they get a bit like haywire um, that's no disrespect to both of them, because both of them are very talented individuals for bringing Star Trek to life, and both of them are currently forefront on Star Trek shows. Terry's just completed season three, Akiva's overseeing Strange New Worlds. Um, but yeah, it's still like, I think it may have like modeled it a little bit, because people have their own views of how to do things, so... Yeah, and I think Akiva may, I'm, this is just a guess, but I'm imagining it was overlapping with production of Strange New Worlds as well, yeah. so... You know, it seems like Picard may have suffered a little bit from like maybe even just like a lack of attention. I wonder though, you know, we won't really know these things. These are things that like you find out, you know, through conventions and like a lot of research people like Larry Nemechek who go into like yeah. the real deep, you know, like background stuff. But so we may not find out for years, but it will, it will be interesting to see. But again, you know, for me personally, that it, it's not that important because overall the no. season was a was good it wasn't like a total disaster for me anyways i know some people might uh have a different opinion but at least for me it was a very enjoyable season overall i have a question for you do you believe jack that like the majority of the cast are not returning uh next season or do you, so, do yes. you think it's legit yeah, we have really got so. confirmation of this and it was a lovely article on trekcentral.net by the way which myself and tj oversaw um we do know um isa Brionis, who plays soji or koi uh she will not be returning uh, she's confirmed and waved goodbye to Soji. Now, obviously, she could still cameo as somebody else, uh, but she has mm -hmm. specifically said goodbye to Soji, which I would regard as her main character for Star Trek Picard. So, yeah. therefore, that's a goodbye. Uh, she posted on Instagram saying this, and I will post the link in the chat now if anyone wants to go read this article. Um, if not, all our articles are available on Trekster.net and on YouTube videos as well. Um, Santiago Cabrera has also confirmed he's a goodbye. He won't be back. Alison Pills confirmed that she was not in season three whatsoever, which raised a good point about the Borg being regarded at the gate. I'm not sure how that revolves it. We'll, have, we'll discuss it in a second. Uh, and we also have Evan Evergore, our lovely Romulan friend. He's confirmed he's not returning. Also, Orla Brady, not sure about her yet. Her sort of fate is a bit ambiguous. We don't know whether like she'll be returning or leaving or not. Um, Someone just shared an article with me on Twitter saying that she's also not coming back. Really? But I don't know. Uncon you know, I, I haven't read the article, but I just saw the headline. So, okay. I, my, my, I mean, 
Now, I, I sometimes I don't really believe these things because my thing is like maybe they're trying to save some fan service surprises. But I do think overall these stories are there's definitely a sense of closure that we're getting, especially there with the is, yeah. And, and I think like, one of the like things so, yeah. I think one of the critiques is like this is Star Trek Picard, like it's meant to be this new cast of characters, and I'm all for having the next gen cast back. But it does feel like some like of our cast members we've grown to love and you know appreciate over two seasons are now being pushed out the door in favor of the tng cast and that's that it depends which way you see it like i i really am looking forward to jonathan frakes being back like he's one of my favorite actors and favorite individuals and why Ry is my favorite oh, like here we go words it's my favorite character <laughs> so is wolf as well like, a lot of us been begging for wolf back since season one even before season one but it's still it's still like i don't know i I want to. I'll wait until I reserve my judgment until season three. But it is a shame that some of these cats do appear to have been pushed out the door in a sense. Um, particularly some where their fate's just been like, oh yeah, whatever. Like Elnor, he's still alive in prison. <laughs> he doesn't have to leave. <laughs> so our idea fact is we are getting Michelle Hurd and Jerry Ryan back as seven nine and Raffi. Yeah. Um, I really want to see Jerry Ryan as a captain in Starfleet. We got a glimpse uh -huh. of that at the end of Picard season two. Please give me more of yeah, that. I was going to ask you, because, yeah, I was also, like, super into Rios being in, in Season 3, like you said. I Like, I enjoyed him as the captain of Stargazer. But at the same time, once I saw Seven sitting in that seat, yes. I was like, you know what? Actually, this is just as cool. I'm, like, super down for a Seven as captain. And, you know, I love that it, like... I love that Jean-Luc wasn't even part of that conversation that she had with Rafi about that, you know? Yeah. And, and he's just like, I'm giving you a field commission. You're the expert on the Borg. Let's go. And in that <laughs> scene, one of the things that I loved was when she sits down, if you if you look in the background, you see uh, Rafi just beaming with pride. And I'm like, yeah, you know, like, so so I could see, you know, just like Deanna's uh, Will's uh, first officer on Titan. Like, why not? Like, uh, I think Rafi I'd, should I go transfer and, yeah, and be Seven's first officer. And there'd be some great opportunities opportunities for both conflict and 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 concordance there so i like that as i well, would so. happily watch a star trek show with seven of nine as the lead um that would be fantastic like i think in the modern day in terms of like obviously we'll discuss season three in a second but in terms of future star trek shows um i believe now someone don't quote me as i've read it somewhere but i can't remember where i've read it but terry Matalus and nikiba goals and one of them one of the crew said they see the sort of 24th 25th century as the new possibility for a next gen star trek show they see that as the modern era of star trek and where star trek is right now so whether we'll see like future content to that in the future but i would honestly back a seven of nine show thinking that her commanding her own ship or being a part of it be fantastic and we already have the set for the stargaze as well you don't spend right. that much money if you're only going to use it for two seasons personally <laughs> like it's where they built the strange new world set they were going to bloody do the thing you know <laughs> also stargazer is interesting for her to command because it's a it, yes like her it has borg parts right <laughs> you know? exactly so, so there could be some interesting uh storylines there and i like the idea of like we've kind of been building towards like the you know with zora being a sentience you know there's i think there could be some cool weird things about stargazer's borg parts that give her some interesting uh differences from other ships that we've seen before much like the uh how like voyager got sick in that one episode because of her gel packs or something yeah like that. yeah she got a virus so it'd be interesting to see like if uh if stargazer herself well anyways that's getting way ahead of ourselves here speaking like... of season three though obviously we got a bit of a teaser at, um the end of season two of this sort of, like spatial anomaly um but obviously we do yeah. also have the information that season two is self-contained and therefore that may not carry into season three um, I think so... it's also a lie. I just don't believe anything Terry Metalis says about those things. <laughs> but I, tease, I just think yeah. it's because they want to save the survive. You know what I mean? Like, I don't think they're doing it to be bad or anything. I just think there's like surprises that they want audiences to like, they want audiences to like be fooled or, or stuff. But if it is self-contained, if that is in fact true, then yeah, what was the point of it? It feels like a bit of a... <laughs> I see text truck in chat saying, sadly, Stargate sets have been taken down. They may have been taken down, uh, but those okay. parts are still somewhere. Like, they're, they're not going to chuck them out of a window anytime soon. I would happily bet them. Because we've been monitoring Paramount for a while now, and if teachers in the chat, she might confirm us as well. Um, Paramount have been moving studio stuff around for a while. They look like they're trying to relocate studio assets. Because I believe, mm. I don't quite remember this again because I don't know the exact details, but the studio they film at, or one of the studios they film at in Canada isn't owned by them, I don't think, or it's one of them, it's owned by someone else. So they may be trying to relocate assets and I, move it somewhere. I think it's Pinewood. I think they were yeah. shooting at Pinewood Studios. And obviously, yeah. CBS don't, or Paramount Global, should I say, yeah, Pinewood isn't owned by them. So if Picard was filmed there, which I don't know, a disco user, they could be moving assets around, 
to try and get into their own base and stuff like that. So it can entirely possible just moving sets, which isn't unheard of. So yeah, it doesn't actually mean they're gone just yet. I I'm going to hold out hope until until I see the Stargazer chair in a bin. <laughs> I am going to hold out hope. So <laughs> the other <laughs> possibility text. is that uh, you know, it, like let's say that the sets are torn down. If there's enough of a demand, if a, if a lot of people show interest, you know, just like what happened with Strange New Worlds, and and you know, I, I personally, as much as I love the Bridge of Stargazer, I do think those cha those chairs do deserve a little more of a captainy upgrade. You know, yes. they're a little too uh, ordinary, if you ask me. <laughs> Especially the captain's chair. She it needs a little more heft, I think. It, in my opinion so why not build some new sets and and, and let's go i totally I mean, we agree. Do know that the bridge modules are modules so they just pop a new bridge on whenever they want to yeah exactly <laughs> which is fantastic so like oh i i can't wait to um see more of that so hopefully it's gonna be really fun yeah, um, I agree. but yeah let's let's transfer to strange worlds in just a second but i say theories of season three where do you see season three going um for you know Star Trek Picard or any random theories yeah, anything you think oh yeah I can't wait to explore I have I'm trying to keep my uh theories at bay because my mind does wander uh, <laughs> and I do love yeah. the theory craft uh but I will just say that like based on what I've heard and like kind of um you know the idea that they have a really good someone I think it might have been Dave Blast said we have a really good uh villain uh in store yes. for season three and stuff like that and so whatever's i just like the idea of whatever's bringing this whole crew back it's like you know like a kind of a magnificent seven last hurrah type riding out into the sunset to me uh that's something that uh i always lamented after nemesis i kind of had resigned to the idea that we would not actually get another uh tng era like tng cast movie you yeah know? i was like okay especially when disco came out i was like all right they're obviously star trek's moving on so i had no idea when so when picard came out i thought you know this show has the opportunity to tell that story and whether it's throughout three seasons or like what they ended up doing now which is going to be one massive season that's like a, you know one big seasonal you know thing um i i always felt that this show had that potential to do that and so i'm really excited about that uh, I do have some hopes. Like, I'd like to see Dr. Crusher be a captain. I'd like to see her be Captain Crusher. Ooh, I'd yeah. like to see, like, a new... I drew... I recently drew a picture. Like, I had a oh, dream, yeah. Jack. This is so weird. No, uh, tell us. Pasteur, Pasteur 2. <laughs> And so I drew a picture of her, Ooh. and she has like she has like Odyssey elements. I'll send it to you okay, later. Okay, yeah, send it to me. Like yeah, Odyssey, Odyssey elements and stuff like that. So it'd be neat to see like Pasteur be a thing in in the in the actual Prime timeline, and and Captain Crusher maybe you know. She's already been off to Starfleet Medical, so it'd be nice to see her doing that. Uh, I would love to see Worf back, of course. Give yeah, us uh, him commanding the Enterprise E or just for <laughs> Defiance, you know. I want Worf commanding a ship. It's true. But also, I wouldn't mind if he if he, if he ends up being the governor of a Klingon uh, planet. That would be interesting. You know, I, I'd like them to take some elements from all good things and surprise us in some ways and then also meet expectations in other i would like to see jordy jordy uh happily married to leah brahms or someone i would like to see that um and then of course uh i don't think we'll we'll obviously we won't see data unless it's like in a flashback or a hologram or something i do like that, wonder you know, what they're like doing that. with brent spider in season three like yeah, it's, oh it's another zoom <laughs> <laughs> uh folks are folks are predicting it's lore and i i have i i think that's a possibility because like he is he is an un we don't know where lore is he was he's an interesting villain uh, he is a very interesting villain and and he would be the con of this crew because we've hmm. had experiences with him. you know what i mean like we've got a backstory with him the crew have experiences with him maybe he's really pissed about his brother's death the wrath of lore yeah you know? like it's wrath like of lore. Thing, you know? <laughs> the wrath of lore so who knows but yeah definitely and then i guess uh who am i well we already know Riker and troy but i i i you know just just uh that covers like i think everyone i even would like to see uh denise crosby come back as sila you know like the little surprises here and there and like i know i know but i'd also like to see barkley back <laughs> so there's like a, a lot of characters i'd like to see back but as far as the story and the plot you know i don't know what it could be but uh whatever it is is exciting at the beginning of that trailer 
Jean Luc seems to be writing a letter or an invitation. So if Orla Brady is mm. in fact not returning, my er in initial idea was that it was uh, invit wedding invitations being sent out, and that's how they would get back together initially. And then something would interrupt the wedding. You know, some cataclysm would interrupt the wedding, and then the crew just happened to be get together. <laughs> you know, so. But I don't think that's. I'm going to task anymore. the chat and those viewers watching us in the minute and the team in the Discord for us. If anyone could find me, where the hell somebody mentioned about. It was either Terry Matalas, Akiva Goldsman, or Alex Kurtzman said they see, like, the Picard era of that time zone being the future of modern Star Trek and, like, setting stuff there. I can't remember where the hell I've read it, so if someone could find it for me, I'd be great. I don't think I've dreamt it. I'm pretty sure it's on a wiki page somewhere, because I remember reading it when researching the Picard season two or something I was writing. So if someone wants to find that for me, it'd be greatly appreciated, because it's going to drive me insane, and I'm going to go mental. Um, but chat, if you've got any questions about Picard season two, I'm going to quickly touch on a theory of my own, and then feel free um to tell us or ask us some questions and me and Starfleet boy will ask or answer them before going to strange new worlds so yeah. hail the quantum explosion as i'm going to call it for every technical term at the very end of um season two i yeah. think that was caused by q's death i reckon <sighs> that something has exploded through time to cause that much effect and you know that's why the borg and federation had to unite to basically solve it like that would make a lot of sense and i think would be really cool so that was my yeah, little theory. Yeah, I think it could be really cool because, yeah, I think we don't know what happens when a Q dies, do we? We don't know. No, we don't. I mean, uh, did what was his name on uh, Voyager? Did he actually die on that episode? I can't remember. No, I don't think he did. That, I don't think he did. Yeah. And so, yeah. And we don't know what would happen to the continuum. Did. We do know from Discovery that there's a reference that they hadn't heard from the Q since about 100 years after the events of Picard. Mm. Uh, so the Q continuum has been quiet. Uh, uh, I think uh, Admiral um, Vance has a throwaway yeah. line about it. Uh, or something like that. So yeah, I do know. I do know Aaron Walkie, who's awesome. He works on Prodigy. Uh, I love Aaron. Uh, recently, yeah, he's really cool. I got to meet him. He's awesome. Oh, yeah. awesome. Shout out to Aaron in case he's listening. <laughs> but, he's lurking uh, somewhere out there. <laughs> he sometimes pops in folks' chats. It's awesome. But uh, but he says that the writers' rooms actually talk a lot more than you would think that they do. Uh, yeah, I heard somebody now, else like, say this recently. Talking, so yeah. A chat saying and, Quinn, uh, uh, Quinn died as a human, so yeah. Oh, okay, okay, interesting. And uh, Alex Kurtzman has certainly teased at some kind of like big crossover event that he would like to see happen, and so I wouldn't be surprised if we're all leading up to something. We'll, all these sort you know, of like really... shows later, like obviously Marvel has set the sort of I'd say format and template for this crossover event. Star Wars is copying it at the minute. I, I mean, copying this in a general term, not a bad way. I'm not disrespecting right, it. Right, right, just um, like, yeah. yeah. Like and I believe Star Trek may attempt to do something similar because it does appear that Paramount are always trying to play catch up to Disney at the minute, which is slightly <laughs> funny. Like, they're still trying to play catch up with the international rollouts of Paramount Plus. Well done, guys. We've almost got there. <laughs> Only another yeah, like, month to go for UK people, at which point seven episodes of Strangely <laughs> Worlds will be out. But hey ho, I can't complain. Finally, it's over here. I'll shut up. <laughs> Are they going to? release all the episodes like at once that I hope already it, come out if they yeah, don't there'll be the a case. riot like you just there guarantee be because yeah, it's like yeah it's just a I shame agree. because started... like yeah it's just a shame because like once again international fans have been left in the dust like it's taken them like two years now to sort Paramount plus out and like i know like these things are not just flicking a switch like it's a very complex business decision but come on guys like you could have done yeah. it by now <laughs> Uh, apparently I mean, Alex Kurtzman I mean, said a crossover is inevitable in an article a while back oh uh, okay gotcha um and and yeah about that like just like yeah I can't wait till the day that like everything's at parody because like it, it is it, it's a strain it's like hard on fans like you know like I, I've seen I've seen folks be like really disappointed and I know there's like you know, there's always, uh, you know, everyone has to keep in mind, of course, that this is only a show and it's like something, but it is a meaningful show. And it's a show that like affects a lot of people and like really shapes people's lives. So I understand the frustration that you folks are feeling. And yeah, I can't wait till the day that we don't have any more of these problems. And stop with the region blocking on trailers, oh, all please, that stuff. Please. Like, just come on, like, let's just stop it. We, we <laughs> always get flack for this because I, 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 I think region blocking is stupid in this day and age. From a PR marketing point of view, as, as uh, people are still going to watch it on whatever platform they do if take strange new worlds like i think people in india can watch it on a service called voot select up until it's announced i've never heard of it however people in india know they're going to watch their content there it's like if we're in the uk we watch or we used to watch a lot of content by sky or virgin media so we know where we're going to watch stuff so why right. the hell they need to geoblock it to a specific account it makes no sense whatsoever because if i see a trader for it i still know like take uh, starship picard 
if I see a trailer for it, I know, oh, yes, I'm going to watch it on Amazon. But if you see a trailer, you go, oh, I'm going to watch it on Paramount. We, we, viewers are smart. Like, audiences are smart. We know where we're watching our content. So I don't know why. Absolutely. Like, some of someone said, like, oh, it's due to rights for doing the geoblocking thing. If so, that's stupid. Like, if it's a condition, it, it is completely stupid. Because we've seen other franchises. I think Game of Thrones have done it before. Uh, way back when they were on air, they would have released trailers. Not geoblock them, but they still have HBO serve it. And other services like Sky or whatever it's called. Sky, I can't remember what it's called now. Um, or some really bad server. Sky Now, I think it was. Um, mm. which, or Now TV. It was terrible in the UK. Terrible quality. Um, but they would be the UK distributor for Game of Thrones. But the Game of Thrones account would still, like, not geoblock stuff. And like Tisha said, the geoblocking is inconsistent. They're geoblocking yeah. some stuff. They stopped geoblocking for a while, and then they turned it on again. It's like, PR, why are you doing this? Please. <laughs> it's so true. It's so true. Oh, it's the same. But anyway, uh, let's move to Stranger Worlds because uh, we've been waffling about it for quite, for quite a while. Um, it's been a good, good conversation. I know that was a good. Uh, that was a good uh, yeah, we, we covered it really well. If there was, a, were there any questions in the audience that you know? I didn't, I didn't see uh, anyone. No, I know yeah. some people are saying about ways to get around things. We're well aware of those ways, but for legal reasons, not being sued by Paramount, I'm not saying them publicly. But don't worry, we definitely know what's going on. Uh, Jack, to answer your question, the 20th century this present day comment was made by Matlas in SFX Cuisine. Oh, can you? Uh, so, oh, Michael, how are you doing, buddy? Michael, you, I think you're saying Michael. Can you um, tweet that to me or send it to my Discord? Because I want to double check that one. Um, yeah, yes, Jeff, cough, cough. We know what you're on about. Um, but show you your world. Let's, let's talk about that. Uh, bye, everyone. We are going to talk about the premiere, episode one, season one, episode one of Star Trek Strange New Worlds. So if you've not watched it yet, and unfortunately, you are some people in international countries who have not figured out how to watch it, uh, turn away now, unless you want spoilers. So keep that in mind. Uh, but yeah, what do you think of Captain Pike's return? Do tell. Awesome. Just really incredible. Oh, awesome. <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> I, it was everything I wanted and more uh, out of this series. This is a high, I was definitely part of that campaign of like, let's give them their own show. And, you know, uh, for me, I, I struggled with Discovery Season 1 and uh, I, I have less struggles with it now. But initially when it first came out and so and that has a lot to do with, you know, it was intentional. Uh, Captain Lorca was just from the mirror universe he was not your typical starfleet yeah. captain so he's not gonna run things the same way you know like uh as one would and but what i liked about season two about captain pike in particular is here's a character who brought in this new the, who brought this kind of like for lack of a better you know uh expression like a very traumatized beaten down crew and relifted uplifted them and i think that that season is so important because captain pike's influence would lead to captain burnham and all kind you know like there's this really cool lineage now you know with like captain pike and his legacy and despite what's going to happen to him he's really left behind like a a huge indelible mark like captain mm. kirk is a, a you know part of captain pike's legacy so is captain burnham you know captain saru actually even you know like so there's so much richness around this character and i love that the show is it feels like a, it feels like discovery branched off into the 32nd century but in a way it's also continuing yeah in strange new world so we're getting like our cake and eating it too it's like you know we were all worried about like well okay fine they're leaving that's good for discovery because it belongs there but what about these stories are these like things that like we left behind and i think strange new worlds is a great way to kind of continue in that same era and like lead us up to like what the promise of discovery was which was you know that it would eventually connect right to the tos era and yeah. so so yeah i think it delivered um it's one of the most uh fun times i've had watching a uh, new star trek show um i just you know uh i initially was one of these people who had problems with reimaginings and just you know i wanted paramount so badly to say this is a reimagining i don't care about that stuff anymore especially yeah. when it's done so well like to me the way that they've reimagined star trek for strange new worlds is spot on like i, I just think, think it looks beautiful yeah, like beautiful show yeah no offense beautiful to tos and everything and i've said this before <laughs> yeah. like i i rarely watch tos so there's no respect to it it's just i i find it too old to watch now i the visual effects it was it's aged and that's just how it ha things happen like i appreciate tos you know as a forefront of star trek and what it is like if we didn't have tos we wouldn't be here having this conversation um but i love the way stranger world is just reimagine stuff and like put a coat of paint on it and yes some of it does look slightly different but and I just, it's not the end of the world like you're yeah, allowed creative differences like people if you just copy and paste the tos people wouldn't watch it it doesn't look good and not in this present day it does not look good some people may hate me for saying that but it's a fact it does not look good however you put a new coat of paint on it and you know make it look beautiful where hey you've got strange worlds 
it's fantastic and and you know certainly like i think that like tos to me like you know i think that like what you're saying is valid i don't feel the same way personally but i have a nostalgia yeah, yeah. because that's what i you know i grew up watching uh tos initially so to me it always has like a little bit of a i upgraded in my mind if you will <laughs> you know what i mean so i don't actually know if i'm watching it uh critically but what, what i will say is that like that kind the spirit of tos the spirit of optimism the spirit of hum humanism and 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 all those things like deserves to be kind of reimagined and and told for a new audience and like hey you know like this is the way to do it and it, this is the way <laughs> so this, this is the way <laughs> this is the way so this is the way to do it and i'm so excited that this is going to introduce a whole new generation of people to that spirit like even if you you know you know even if you can't watch tos because there's a lot of other reasons tos tos is going to continue as humanity gets more and more evolved and closer to that future there's a lot of things about tos that will become further outdated so yeah. i think it's great to have a new show set in that era with the same spirit but new like you know stories we haven't seen before uh and and so that so that all fans can kind of enjoy it and i feel like this is the most since lower decks came out in the in the modern era um just from like you know just just from like my perspective my bird's eye view which is not as big as paramount's i guess but uh what i'm seeing is the same like the more acceptance for this show across the board uh than any other show in, and, and lower decks was the last time i saw that where a lot of yeah. people were like "Ooh, i'm actually excited about this so so it is i think they did nail it i definitely think paramount are playing it safe with star trek strategy worlds to appeal to the audiences who are not initially fans or are fans of picard and discovery um which is good in a way because i think that's what needed like we needed something like that to connect with people but just because they're doing that doesn't mean they're going back on several of the key things that have made you know, discovering Picard's standout. By this, I mean things like transgender characters, um, LGBT characters, well, obviously transgender comes under that, uh, non-binary characters, and just topics which, um, you know, touch on modern day things and stuff like that. I think Star Trek is, you know, really well known for that. And it's always pushed yeah. its boundaries. Like, let's not put, I think people kid themselves sometimes that original Star Trek apparently never ever touched on that. When you rewind back time, Star Trek, you know, touched on quite a lot of controversial subjects, at, which were which were controversial at the time, I should say. They're not now, thankfully. Um, but just look at the original TOS crew. A lot of that was not seen on TV at the time. And we have, these, we have obviously the famous first interracial kiss in colour, I believe is the, the term for that. As I think there was one in black and white. I can't remember. Someone can tell me. Mm. Um, so that was a big thing with TOS at the time. So just because Paramount are playing it safe in some regards by going back to a more traditional classic style show doesn't mean we're getting rid of all the things that make Star Trek so stand out and connect with audiences and make a statement. Firstly, I Trek has always made a statement for me. It's always done that. A hundred percent. I mean, like, I think people who say that Star Trek doesn't get political and doesn't make statements are kind of fooling themselves. It's been like that from the start. Every iteration of Star Trek has taken a stance on some major issue. Whether they got it right or not is a different story, but they yeah. try, like, you know, like, and that's the cool thing. And I just want to also touch on, like, you know, uh, someone also pointed this out to me and it kind of changed my perspective. It's like, if you really think about it, Star Trek's been reimagined several times already. The film era was a reimagining of the TOS uh, look and feel and even like military rising uh the federation and stuff like that i mean uh, starfleet and all that stuff tng was a hundred percent reimagining i mean look at the yeah. look at their idea of what a uh, andorian looks like in that one hologram sequence oh yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> so, like and the romulans certainly like certainly they've repaired a lot of these retcons or reimaginings as future iterations have come on and they've shown now like different kind of romulans together and stuff like that and so uh and then the 2009 the jj abrams films were also another reimagining cleverly done with the time travel and yeah. uh temporal incursion plot but still a reimagining of the a major reimagining of the look and feel of of the original series era and now you have discovery as a reimagining and you know strange new worlds follows that same you know that same reimagining sure uh, but it's done it i think it's done it the best uh of all the of all the series so far i am just loving the way the cast and the crew are working together so far like um obviously we've got like nurse chapel who or, seems fantastic i yeah, want to no. spend more time with dr Mbengo as well he yes. just seems like a he seems like the type you could go to the bar with and not get out till 3 a.m he's one of those and i love him immediately i can't wait to meet hemmer we got a little cheeky tease of him at the end of uh episode <laughs> one when he beams aboard also chief carl as well i want more of this man because he looks fantastic and i think <laughs> give us more you know 
Yeah, the transporter twink is his yes. lovingly <laughs> given name. <laughs> Andrew, I think it's Andrew Day Kim. I hope you pronounce it or D Kim. However, it's yes. um, he loved that name online. I saw someone tweets oh, cool. at him, and he was oh, like, good. "I love it." Like, I'm pretty sure he responded to it. I can't find a tweet right now, so I'm gonna find it for me. But I'm pretty sure he said he loved it. So that was I really love cool. That. That's great. <laughs> yeah, I'm super yeah, excited Kyle, to have more of that. Kyle's a, a quick, a quick favorite. That's the other thing that was really cool about this uh, first episode is the characters just they light up the screen like they really uh, the performers uh you know in chicago one of the things is uh during the strange new worlds panel we got to meet uh celia r gooding the character the actor who plays uh yeah. uhura and she's just, you i just want her to to get anything she wants in life she's just like <laughs> she's such She's a young person. She's filled with so much optimism and enthusiasm, and she really loves Star Trek, and she's really embracing it, and she really wants to, to tell the story of Uhura. And I think that, like, you know, Uhura, even though she's a character that's very dear to many, is an underserved character, and so I'm so glad that we're going to get to see more of her story. Same thing with Chapel. I mean, Chapel, like, really, you can only... You, it's like a handful of lines, really, you know, in, in TOS and stuff like that. So to think that we're going to get, you know, more, and, and the same with Mbenga, you know? So I love the choices of of quote unquote legacy characters that they chose to bring back are the ones that were underserved uh, in the in the original series and i think it's a, a really great move and i'm instantly in love with them i like you said it's like they all have something really in interesting about them and you know that <laughs> it's just just like i keep laughing like the the chemistry between uh christine and and uh dr mbenga and like you know how he whispers under his breath like you're my favorite like you know like that part and you know she's running around and chasing the kylie and <laughs> you know through the ship and stuff like that and no it was just it was great it, it was great to see also attention to like um things that we're familiar with in TOS like when the captain beams down to the planet you know there's always someone on the bridge crew who takes the center seat exactly, and, something yeah. Always, yeah, and something always happens so she's like no, <laughs> why man, is it always like, me <laughs> why me you know so stuff like that well, Tika is as well you know, I want to spend more time with her character because she just seems fantastic yeah like I, I want to spend more time also La Nunez Singh as well lovely yeah. introduction there stand out yeah 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 uh, also Dom also... and TJ just passed through a note Andre de Kim loves the name Transporter Twink apparently uh, they've tweeted that <laughs> that looks fantastic so <laughs> really enjoying that Excellent. one <laughs> I um I have to say that uh for uh Leon she was definitely a character upon rewatch that I even found more compelling than before mm. like I'm very interested in her uh, I don't know if you I don't know if you feel like this too i threw out this wild thing on my stream earlier which is there's something about her that reminds me of reed like just their disposition like reed malcolm reed on enterprise just like yeah. the, the seriousness like the disposition i guess like i don't know and i mean i'm not they getting both close accents, to people but, in a sense as well yeah, like, like reed is very much distance. to himself yeah yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it's, he's like a military a, man so yeah, yeah man, but... exactly she she gives me that i that military idea and like the the scene when she's like like she's making her case for the deflectors was awesome yes like you know her security mindedness like at first you think she's overreacting no but she assessed the situation so well and like it was great like you know and i love the editing in that scene too like they were Spock and she they kept like they were mirroring their shots and there was even this one like overhead shot like of them when they were having like a yeah. debate you know and stuff like that and then pike makes the decision he's like yeah uh raise you know like shields and then and stuff i mean uh, raise deflectors and stuff like that to full so yeah, I just to me it like hit everything just so perfectly and and really well. She does. As someone pointed this out to me as well. It's like Christina Chong, um, very much reminds me of Kamina Drummer, the character Kamina Drummer from um, uh, The Expanse. I was thinking about Star Trek: The Expanse. And that's yes, entirely there's a bit of a belter <laughs> quality to her. And then also, uh, someone was pointing out she runs a little bit like a more mature kind of like a more serious version of the character on the Orville, who's very like secure. The security character I can't remember. Her yeah, name I, moment, I don't know. Like I haven't watched the Orville in years at this point. I just see it as I like I do see those I do see those but I just but ultimately I do think after meeting her like Leon is definitely a unique yeah unique of from those characters she's similarity but definitely like, unique yeah and yeah, both actors yeah. are fantastic it's just as well a, aesthetically I could see the the vibe being similar between those characters yeah and uh for sure um but yeah and then we get that gory you know uh tale of her past and like you know how she was like she was basically brutalized by the gorn and all her family and her friends on uh on her ship were just like he used a, what was it on a on a uh uh like a like a basically like a nursery, nursery planet, planet yeah some, yeah nursery planet of some sort and 
just crazy that the it's like a breeding ground or something as well so i'm like oh god that's and like yeah all this stuff i'm I'm glad you know we are past i you know we are past the era of like i think like in in the past we would have seen flashbacks with like gruesome images i think we uh, might um so there's a detail i can share i think i can share this one we do know there will be a younger flashback at some point for stranger worlds that is expected Uh, and where we'll see a younger version of Lan Nunez Singh, I believe. And okay, I okay. think. Team, can somebody remind me if we've got the young someone related to her? If I say that, hopefully I'll get told whether that's safe to say or not. <laughs> uh, but yeah, basically, I believe we'll see a flashback to some point. Speaking of the Gorn, I have a little theory for one of the upcoming episodes, um, which is episode four, I believe. Now, in the trailer, we see the crashed Constitution class, don't we? Um, I reckon that's Gorn related. Because if you watch the trailer, uh, and you watch the mid-season trailer, it looks very closely related to that. And also, because we know of the season, or we know the episode titles and log lines, um, episode 4 will have some flashbacks of Lan's past. Um, that's what we've done. Oh, cool. Okay, cool. Alright, I gotta go dive deeper into and this. And in this episode, <laughs> in episode 1, it does say she has a brother called Manu, and we are aware of an actor playing Manu. So I believe we will see the older version of Manu, or we will see a younger version and it's a flashback sort of replay sort of thing, whatever like that. Paul has also just confirmed that in the chat though as well, so. Oh, fascinating. Very Happy cool. days. <laughs> um, so our, our notes and research are correct then if someone else already just said it, who is outside of our <laughs> That's even better. <laughs> I, I, you, I know Paramount are going to be sat there tomorrow morning, like wiping sweat because Jack's probably the security threat again has leaked something. I haven't for context. We've researched this independently and learned it. Please, Paramount, please. <laughs> Um, crafting's not a crime, man. Exactly. <laughs> if if I think Wesley's going to return and somehow accidentally gets it right, that's on me. Uh, exactly. I, I did I did tweet on Thursday. I tweeted whoops. <laughs> Just with hashtag <laughs> Picard. So I want to see if I can get anything right with Strange New World so far. I did have a couple of crazy theories, but I will share them in article format once I put more concrete like stuff. Oh, I might tell you next week, but I, I've got some more concrete theories about one. Uh, one thing we should discuss: Robert April. What did you think? Loved him. Loved, Loved him. Yeah. Admiral April uh, thought he was a really cool addition to the team. I like the idea that we're going to have him be the good Merle of the series. Yes. You know, like, uh, and he's, you know, all the admirals t- end, end up being bad. So it's it's good to have an admiral that you, you already know he's not going to be bad. I love that he went bat- to bat for the team as well. And like, you know, came up with that loophole at the end. That was really yeah. clever and stuff like that. I also like, um, he's very like, um, Adam Forrest is who I think of. Yeah, yeah, he's got like, yeah, he's got that gravitas to him, doesn't he? He's got like something, you know, and he's almost like, you know, in my mind, he's incorruptible, you know, which is yes. like a good thing. Like, not it's, just I even really in think, the sense of what. Like, I really think ahead, he's like so. Admiral Forrest, where like he's not going to put up any shit, but also at the same time, isn't going to let them get away with. I was like, well, help them out. Exactly, exactly, 100%. But yeah, he was a standout character. I just, I've always, uh, uh, you know, I've always known about Captain April and have always wanted to see more about his story. Um, And so I do hope that, uh, you know, as the series progresses, I don't want everything, you know, necessarily in season one, but I do like the idea that we're going to see a character arc for him as well and that he's part of this team and he's going to be included in all that. So I'm really happy about that. We should probably, uh, before we touch on another character who's appeared in the episode one as well, I want to say the deep cuts in episode one are fantastic. Like, we just touched on the Gorn thing there and Manu, but also um, Shuttlecraft Stamets. That was awesome. Yeah, that was a awesome moment i loved uh did you did you notice that like pike kind of takes note of it when he hears shuttlecraft i haven't no i haven't noticed that while i could watch it again he just kind of like he kind of like looks and takes note of it and i I couldn't help but get a little emotional in that part because he's obviously thinking of paul stamets you know and and maybe even wondering what his fate was in that moment i can't Uh, if i heard but like someone might need to correct me i'm pretty sure they called another shuttlecraft in that scene or starship i thought i heard another name mentioned there I'm going to have to go and check it again later, but I'm pretty sure I heard someone else's name, so I will tweet it. Dom no, just put in the chat, Starbase 1 has been repaired as well. Obviously, there's Starbase there from the uh, the war, which is really cool. Yeah. Uh, at Admiral UK, so Ian's pointing out USS Archer, another fantastic thing. Also, USS Martin Luther King Jr., I believe, another yep. great reference. And chat, like if you've got any, point him out. Oh, go on. 
Yeah, like how they call her the King Junior too. As like yeah, a yeah. That was cool too. I love that. I knew exactly what they were talking about, and that was really neat. I loved it. I yeah. love it when ships get their like cheeky little nicknames and stuff like that. It's like uh, one of my favorite ships from another franchise called the Ford Unto Dawn. So it just gets nicknamed the Dawn. I'm like, I love oh, that I love name, that, yeah. but also I love the shortening of names as well. I'm, I'm yeah, pretty sure. Cool. Yeah, I'm pretty sure there's some Star Trek ships that get like shortened as well. I can't think of the top I would of imagine my head. Like the, the like the Ulysses S. Grant was probably just the Grant. Grant yeah, or, you know, like there's stuff like that. I, I imagine na full named, full named historical figure starships just get called. Yeah, by the last after a while you like want that. to shorten it. Because <laughs> yeah, I wonder if the Archer is actually called the USS Jonathan Archer and they just call her the Archer and stuff like that. Essentially, that yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, it's like in uh, Stargate, one of my favorite franchises. They have the USS George Hammond, which just gets nicknamed the USS Hammond. So right. So it's That's like short awesome. names. Speaking, <laughs> I, I just casually show this off by the way and give a lovely shout out to Hero Collector, who have recently given you can Ooh, see this camera, <laughs> who have recently released a Daedalus class model, and it is absolutely beautiful. Thank you, Hero Collector. And if you're watching, hello. Uh, speaking by the way, I've got. I've, I've, I'm just going to be nerd out here a second, so we're going to appreciate Jack's desk. I have got the Enterprise. I'm going to be honest. <gasps> Look at her. I she looks beautiful. The, uh... I bought the uh, plastic, uh, the one one thousand scale model. Oh yeah, it's the first. Yeah, it's the first model I'm going to be building since I was a kid. So I'm excited oh, very about nice. building that. Yeah, I'll post pictures and stuff on, on Twitter. But yeah, I'm gonna. I, I already bought some paints. Nice. Uh, I'm, you should do I'm a stream of do that. The, what's that? You should stream it and do it like that. Yeah, I think I should. I yeah. think I shall. I think I'll do that. Yeah, it's a cool idea. Um, but yeah, I'm excited to build her because I'm in love with this. Uh, I'm I'm in love with this new version of the Constitution class. She's such a gorgeous uh, uh refit of her or like reimagining if you will and yeah and and i in in a lot of ways i i love the is it ryan church's design in 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 the jj abrams films i think um, so but i thought you know it fits well and i love those designs but this kind of like gives me that like this kid gives me the the i i think she's just a wild overstatement of like craziness like they were just like let's mm. go wild with let's the just blow it out of water you know yeah, like, just yeah. to me this is a more uh nuanced upgrade and yeah. it still gives it that like hot rod feeling like it gives it that yeah feeling of, like yeah she's like she's a powerful ship you know and again engineering looked gorgeous like uh when they showed did you see um we tweeted this out in a week as well pixel mondo who do the ar walls and visual design sort of that they revealed how they made engineering and uh, it's on our Twitter account right now. It's head over to Trek Central or Virtual Central on Twitter. You can view it. But they show us how they made it engineering. It looks beautiful. I love the technology they're using for oh, it as well. Wow. I can't really see yeah, Hema in engineering. Wall. Give me a chief. Like, I, I want to see yeah, him in action. Give us a chief. They also, the, the scene where uh, uh, T'Pring and uh, Spock are having dinner, they showed the behind the scenes of that. And I was really impressed. I mean, it just looks so good. It does, and, yeah. And, and, and all the actors say, like, it's just such a great thing to act somewhere where you're actually seeing you know to be able to see these things it, it, it puts you into the scene and 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 you could tell i feel like the performances are very good like it looks like you know when spock's looking off into the distance he's really seeing what we're seeing as well so you know and things like that so it's really i think it, like really pixel mondo and the ar walls and the people who take part in these have done great work we saw a bit of it in discovery season four i believe when um stamets and booker visit vulcan and they have obviously um, the name I'm forgetting, a president, who she called again. Oh, Rylak. <laughs> no, no, uh, Vulcan president. Tarina. Oh, uh, Tarina. Tarina. I was going to say Tarina, that's not the right one. Tarina. I'm mixing <laughs> Tarina and Tarina there. Uh, when they visit there and they have sort of like the session of scientists, the scenery there is beautiful. And, and the AR war is a fantastic piece of film and technology. We first saw it using like the Mandalorian, so now using it here is like beautiful. I am, I'm loving beautiful. it to be fair. Dom said in the chat they refer to the team that are working on the air wall as the holodeck division. Yes, I yeah, I love it that. It's a holodeck. It totally is a holodeck. I hope we all, uh, I hope one day uh, they're able to like uh, bring this technology to a convention, like That'd in a smaller great. way, where you can walk into a mini AR environment and it would be like a holodeck. And so we can actually see what, and maybe even film scenes like that. I like a little really fan cool scene, could be really cool. Yeah, there was a cool experience when I was a kid um, at Disney, uh, no, sorry, at Universal Studios here in Florida, where you can, and I have to find my video, it's somewhere in the in the yeah. archives, but it was the bridge of the Enterprise around the Star Trek IV okay. time period, and it was all green screen in the background, but when you got your final video, it was the bridge in the background oh, nice. with, like, actual people walking behind you, and it looked so At the time, so that good. must have been, yeah, like, like, fantastic, to be it fair. It was such a fantastic uh, thing. We've so seen, like, like um, some levels of, like, AR and, like, VR and green screen stuff before. I'm pretty sure at New York Comic Con in San Diego, they've had these activation experiences for, like, Paramount Plus shows, particularly with Star Trek, where you step in 
and like the screens light up and it's like a transport experience it's called someone can probably find material online but like beams you different environments and all there's like a wraparound screen showing you different things and i'm like simplistic for the environment it's still pretty cool to give people a little fun thing to do uh, i know one of our team i think tj's going out to new york comic con this year um and a few others might be um but yeah it's stuff like that is fantastic to showcase as well that's awesome so jack what was your favorite what was the standout moment in this episode for you Ooh, um there's one um I think Pike's speech to the Kylie sort of delegates, I guess we can call them representatives, that stood out really well. Uh, I think they touched on the nose with like the whole insurrection and civil war thing. I was like, oh, okay, that's, that's touching a little bit close to home there. Um, however, the whole like yeah. um, inclusion of, what was it? Um, just his speech. There's a quote, I, I have mentioned a quote, something in the chat. Uh, <laughs> or in our like work chat. I'm going to go try and bloody find it now. Um, but it was something, oh, I don't know what it was now. Or is it? It was like some quote they did there about how like the future is what they make of it or something like that. Oh, here we go. It's Pike's oh, thing. It's like, because to our last moment, the future is what we make it. It's a beautiful quote. I love that. Yeah, it is a beautiful thing. Yeah. You know, there, there there's this, I think there's going to be something interesting with the Pike character in particular about, uh, you know, destiny. And we saw a little bit of this of this in Picard too, of destiny versus free will, right? You know? Yes. And, and so I think that like, you know, I think that most of us who've, uh, I'm, I'm a lot older than you, Jack. So that most of us who've lived a little, we realize it's a little bit of both. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there, there's a little bit of destiny and there's a little bit of free will and you, yeah. you kind of have to like blend the two and, you know, and, and reconcile them. But, uh, but yeah, I, I certainly love that that's going to be a theme. Um, and it's also very poignant right now, as you said, uh, you know, a little hitting, you know, rightfully so hitting home, you know, like not, not pulling punches, if you will. Yeah. Um, um, which I appreciate as well. And that's something that I thought was really great. Like how great it is to mark the first episode of a new series with such an, a poignant and important and such a relevant message for today as well. Yeah. So great. I like your, I like your standout moment. I think that's, I have to agree. That's mine. I too. love it when Star Trek <laughs> does good speeches and has good quotes to go to because one of my favorite speeches is Archer's ones to the, um, the coalition of planets delegation sort of thing in enterprise's end of episodes, I think is a uh, Terra Nova. I think so. That one. Terra Prime? One of them. It was which, no, it was Terra Nova. It was, um... Was it Terra Prime? Terra Prime? I can't remember. It was that ending episode of, um, Enterprise. Uh, what are, some argue should have been the ending episode. But when he's like, uh, the future is out there. Let's explore it together or something like that. Still stands one of my favourite quotes of all time. What's my other, my other, like, favourite phrase from next gen, or particularly generations, is when Picard says, time is a fire we burn in. Or, so I think Soren says it, and Picard, like, relates yeah, to it. Picard's like... <laughs> What the hell? <laughs> um, yeah, so like, then like the whole thing, like, I rather think um, time is a companion that accompanies some of the journey, uh, reminding us to cherish every moment because they will never come again. And I think that's a great yeah. sort of analogy. And when Star Trek can make quotes like that, which you can relate to personal life. And I remember when I, I was on a date once and I mentioned the whole time is thing and it won me some brownie points there of a person. Um, but I mean, when Star Trek <laughs> has sort of things like that, I think you can relate them to real life and it delivers a message but it's not directly trying to speak to you it's more of like a calm message but it's just getting the job done and i really love that when trek does it or when any show does it it's really like it just connects to me i find yeah i agree they they st it sticks with you it stays with you it informs you I, I mean for me star trek is so personal and it really like just to me it's like the 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 fuel that feeds me to to do the things that like i mean you, you see starfleet boy here talking about trek all the time but just like everyone else i have the same struggles like we've all collectively experienced this pandemic together we're all trying to get back to some state of normal we're all seeing like conflicts around the world that we think are unnecessary and things like that so yeah i feel like having things that can motivate you and, and give you that energy to like deal with those things the bigger things like is very important and star trek just happens to do that for me I totally agree. Thank you to Snoopy McQueen for donating $5. Strange Worlds was awesome. Star Trek lives. Thank you, Snoopy. That's greatly appreciated. Of course, anybody who feels dropping a donation or becoming a YouTube member here on the channel, we will be booting some of it soon. So you've got some fantastic new emotes to play with. Um, we've got uh, some of those playing. I think we've got some emotes in the chat. So if you are a YouTube member, you can play with like the Captain Pike emote. I'm going to drop it in the chat. Look at that. It's a lovely Pike emote. Oh, we do have a Picard one, which looks beautiful as well. Uh, so if you do become a YouTube member to support the channel, <laughs> Trekker awesome. Pie has designed those for us. I'm going to get some more soon as well, because I want an Archer one, because I have to have an Archer one. Um, oh, cool. Very uh, cool. I think Trekker also Price doing that. Uh, yeah, so Gary <laughs> always does the best work. Like, Gary yeah. did be stream background, we're cutting streaming on that now, and it's just beautiful, so I can't wait to have more of that. 
yeah um i think to be fair so hell we've touched on everything haven't we like chat if you guys have any questions right now we've sort of crossed most of our stuff haven't we i mean it's been a we've gone over time as usual but it's been a, oh, yeah. nice, a good stream <laughs> i'm really enjoying yeah, the fact we've fun. got the streams time back when you're having fun <laughs> yeah it's really great to have these back i used to watch them when i wasn't on them i used to watch them so i really enjoy it <laughs> i enjoy i can't wait to get back, some like mostly. special guests on as well like, i can't wait to get more star trek youtubers on there chat is anybody you think we should get on as well like obviously we've got stuff to boy on currently um we, we <laughs> could always try i would love to revive ketwalski someday he's not gone by the I way know. he's just he's missing an action we do we do know he's okay but I would love to have him back one day. Uh, but I know where's we're going to have the text. Enterprise and where's Ke Ketwalski? Those He's missing a Ketwalski is don't die, but it's missing in action. Uh, one day, one day we'll have him back. Uh, but no, I, hopefully maybe we can get um, Gary on. Trek Prize might be a good idea someday. But it's plenty more Star Trek content creators. I would love to get on to talk things. And we've got nine incoming weeks of Strange New Worlds. We've got more Prodigy. We've got more Lower Decks and Vem Picard. There is plenty of people we should get on. I'd love to get Jesse back on again at some point. Um, they're always a pleasure to speak to and have a laugh with. Um, so there's plenty of people out there. But chat, if there's anyone you think we should go there, it'd be great. Uh, so Cake is Eternal, which is a fantasy name, says, I think all the Strange, uh, Strange World streams will run over the season. So much to talk about. Yes, there's going to be so much to talk about. Uh, we are going to have a ton of stuff to talk about, aren't we? It's going to be great. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I can. I. I, I feel like I'll. I'll have plenty to talk about over and over. <laughs> It'll be fun. <laughs> People are saying we want Don Paris, but yeah, we do want Don back on screen yes. as well. He's. He's currently got some bad allergies. Um, but I think he'll be back sometimes. So we will harass him to. If I have to drag him down to Bristol and sit him here, he. He will be back on the stream at some point. So, he's not escaping. We love Don. We love Don Paris. <laughs> I want, so, yeah, I want, no. I want this, one day, chat, guys, he's been there. He's a, yeah, the chat. he's, he's been also there, yeah. both him and TJ, shout out to them. They are assisting me via our work chat for TC in sending me the links to everything I talk about so I can then talk about it in actual detail and not quote my own made up stuff, apparently. <laughs> um, also, text track and see him in chat. Hello, text, how are you doing? Um, we'll have to have you on at some point. Oh, dad one as well. We had Ian on to talk with us about the Star Trek cruise a while back. He did a fantastic yeah, job. That's cool. Uh, Ian covered the cruise for Trek Central and gave some highlights. He did a great job. So, I would definitely get him back on at some point to talk more about the cruise so i believe they're doing another cruise next year as well so that would be cool to have him back on board yeah, yeah back on board back on board a boat huh, huh? <laughs> well done <laughs> i'm here all night i'm not but we've got to get one crack in jail i've mentioned enterprise f and made bad jokes it's been a successful stream evening so absolutely so uh so hopes for the series jack oh i don't know um i'm really hoping they touch on more tos era stuff like uh, we've got so much stuff coming up as well. Like, obviously, we know of a few episodes. Uh, I'm looking forward to next week's Comet episode. Uh, but we, well, we didn't talk about Sam Kirk, did we? We completely forgot about that. Whoops. We did. The poor uh, actor, yeah. the actor who plays him said, he may not be the Kirk you wanted, <laughs> He's but the Kirk hopefully you've got. give him a chance, he'll be the Kirk you need. <laughs> I think he looks great. Uh, I know. Yeah, he, yeah, look he looks fantastic. I want to see more of him. Um, but also just having... They basically teased us with Kirk in the episode. Me and TJ are watching it. Um, um, and we went, oh, God, they've not done Kirk. Like, we said, don't do this to us. Because I've got some controversial opinions about introducing Kirk in Strange New Worlds. I don't think he should be just as soon. However, giving us Samuel Kirk was a little like, hey, we're going to tease you, but it's not that guy. And they gave us Sam yeah. Kirk. So I loved it. And I, I can't wait to see how he actually does um, does in the show. I'm looking forward to it. Mustache. I agree. I I think he's going to be an exciting character. I think this would have been a really, you know, you can't change the past, obviously, but I wish that the leak unless had the never happened. Unless the future is broken. <laughs> yeah, unless the future is broken. That's true. <laughs> then we have to. But I, I'm, I'm a little disappointed that I found out that uh, James T. Kirk will eventually appear in yeah. uh, Strange New Worlds. I would have loved that to have just been a casual little surprise or a moment. But this. How about PR having... basically jumped the gun again because somebody <laughs> yeah. took a set picture and they thought we must be the first people to announce this. They should adopt the Disney policy of just not giving a shit. And just not giving a shit. <laughs> and yeah, not exactly. announcing anything. Because people with that are still going to be excited either way. Like, if he shows up on screen, it's like, take the Mandalorian. We knew Ahsoka was going to show up, but when she did, it was still exciting, and Disney technically didn't exciting, announce yeah. that. So, hey, hey. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. But I think that, like, the cool thing to me is that this gives me hope because I also have some controversial appearances about how Kirk should be handled. Yeah. But having Sam as a part of the crew gives me hope that Kirk's uh, Kirk's season two uh, appearance will be related to Sam and not necessarily interfere with ideas that we may have about Kirk's place in this time 
you know, as far as, uh, you know, what we what we understand. So I think it's going to be interesting, like maybe a rescue mission and, you know, or something like that. And, you know, I don't know, like, you know, it could be any number one a, n number of things. But I do love the idea of uh, fleshing out uh, Samuel Kirk. You know, we know his fate uh, in TOS. Sadly, yeah, exactly. But... <laughs> but it's nice to see. That's the cool thing is like, you know, all of us are used to this like nonlinear style of storytelling. So you know it even though knowing the fate and in a way it parallels for us as an audience kind of like what's going to happen to pike as well which is pretty cool too so there's gonna, always going to be this like oh uh, i like, tell you i thought like, something what i would love to ooh. see take me back to the commissioning of the enterprise and bloody give me a cameo from scott Beckler as, a, as yes. archer like just yes. please that and i as uh, ian just reminded me the chat i personally agree we should only have seen kirk either as a small little cameo somewhere or handing over the enterprise to pike at the end that's where it should have played. Right. That's right. when they could have had him, and it, they wouldn't have needed Paul Wesley. I've, they still could have Paul Wesley for it, but it's like it wouldn't need a major role. Just a cameo going, yeah. yep, this is the new captain. And it, they, like a transition handover scene would have been beautiful, I think. Yeah, exactly. That would be very nice. I agree with that as well. It's sort of like, like I, I um, there's a program I used to uh, watch, you've heard of, it's called The West Wing, um, which was a political program in the United States uh, by Aaron Sorkin. Fantastic show if anyone's not watched it. Um, but one of the things they did is the last season was about the, I think it was the last season issue or last couple of episodes, but the outgoing president of a new incoming one. I mean, a couple of episodes about a transition phase, like the new president's in, he selects his new crew or new chief of staff and such like that, and then they show what the old president, aka Martin Sheen's character, goes and does. That could be how Strange Wars ended, is they bring in Pike for four episodes and show the phase transition handover. So that way it's like a gentle step into the original series. But they still could do yeah. that, and Akiva, if you're watching... Feel free. I am happy to be on payroll, uh, or just to, or just to sit in the office. I, I probably wouldn't be allowed to run Trek Central then if I was sitting in the office, because Paramount would probably shoot me on sight. <laughs> Fathery from Text Trek and I came up with this like over drinks uh, online. I think we did it on the oh. stream or something. But wouldn't it be cool if like Pike influences Kirk with that last line of like you know Ooh. that chair? That's where you can make the difference. Like this chair. Like he gives him a little speech at the end of Strange New Worlds. Like this chair is where you can make a difference. Always make sure you get back to this chair or something like that. That would like, be great. Most important so I whatever. think it was. Um... Yeah, it was like the generations line that he gives to to Jean yeah. Luc. It was either Kiva Goldsman um, or Henry Alonso Miles, or one of the execs basically said the Kirk we meet in Stranger Worlds will be very different than the Kirk we will see in TOS and the movies. So if Pike yeah. could influence him, that could be really cool because we presume Kirk will be on the Farragut. Um, which should be really interesting. And obviously, if we look at those leaked filming pictures, well, hey, uh, he is wearing a different <laughs> comm badge, which looks very much like the yeah. Farragut's badge, or at least a redesign of it. Um, so if he influenced him there, that could be really cool, and I would love that. Yeah, same same here. I agree. So, yeah, I think that'd be really cool. Uh, someone in the chat said, where's Stormgo? If Pike is promoted as a fleet captain and can use Captain the Enterprise after, he can be Kirk without breaking canon. Yeah, that, I think there's definitely ways to do it. And I think as much as people may say that the current execs aren't aware of canon, they are definitely aware of canon. When you get a deep cuts and like interacting shows and crossing of the characters. I mean, if we go back to Picard quickly, one thing Picard did really well is Wesley confirming they dispatch for supervisors, solves a 30 year mystery almost of where the yeah. supervisor, well, almost 50 year mystery because supervisors appeared in TOS and Travis right. appeared in Next Gen. So that ties it up really nicely and in also an awesome way. Like, it doesn't break canon and it sort of solves it up. The only weird thing that I've seen was them beaming up. But hey, yeah. you know. That's the other thing I like to I like to say this about uh, Star Trek's canon. It's it's not a locked canon. It's a living canon, right? Yeah. So you can't really break it. It's just you have to be patient enough to see what a future iteration is going to do to like yeah. fix something that like looks broken, right? So if it were locked down, that'd be one thing. But the TOS, I mean, the uh, Star Trek canon is living. It's a living canon. It changes. It's growing. It's evolving. I like even mentioned this recently, but we always try to tie up sort of like canon and story knots wherever they can. And that's one thing they did with Picard. They tied up Wesley's storyline like he's now got more of a sort of not an ending because it's, it's still open but right. it's still there so yeah uh someone in the chat was like cancel section 31 please i'm aware yeah. the section 31 <laughs> show is like a controversial decision and i personally was like oh i'm not sure we're doing it but i think in the spirit of star trek we should allow the idea of exploring different ideas um and going things like star trek's all about seeing what's or taking things that are different and you might agree with this as well so like exploring things that are different and accepting them and seeing you're just exploring them and understanding them i think there is room for a strange uh, for a section 31 series or movie might i add article on trek mm -hmm. um uh, what could possibly happen with that so no i don't think we should cancel it i know it's like in develop i guess technically it's almost in development hell currently because michelle is <laughs> so busy but yeah I, I think we should cancel it it's there's potential for a section 31 project i will say i use the word project in place of series <laughs>
And I think we've seen that, um, you know, there's like one thing that modern era of Star Trek is doing really well is there's really like a flavor for just about any kind of Star Trek fan. So yeah. I think that like, you know, one of, you know, now we have, I feel like Strange New Worlds just kind of like ties all that in, you Definitely. know, so like now truly you're representing like a huge gamut of interests uh, when it comes to Star Trek. So I love that. This is something we've always said before is like Star Trek or modern Star Trek is like a buffet table um like unless you're the mega fan you're not going to want a serving of everything well it's like right. it's like an weekend buffet you, like, you've got chinese food indian food you know you go for what you want and stuff like that or british food that star trek you know some people only want to watch prodigy crack on some people love discovery but don't like picard happy days some people just want strange new worlds you know carry on or others are just there for lower decks i think if there's a bit of star trek you can enjoy fantastic you don't have to like everything right. but if you do like everything like us Happy days because we're I'm mega nerds and we love it. Buffet, I am, yes. Yeah. I have gone back for a second <laughs> serving. <laughs> exactly. The title of my like, you know, upcoming fitness DVD. <laughs> uh, uh, Dom said Section 31 show would tie in the uh, discontinuity between DSC era and Section 31 and DS9 era Section 31. Yes, it would do, and that would be rather well. Um, yeah. I would love to uh, see that. So, yeah. Uh, yeah um so section one starts with terrace act not going to elaborate we don't know we don't know anything about section 31 so far because the project is still in hiatus well it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's in development hell so many... <laughs> yeah exactly uh what do you think uh though the other idea of being tossed around is possibly a starfleet academy show and so yes uh, there might that might do you know if any have you heard any scuttlebutt about that being in development or anything like that where well, it's been rumors and stuff about it um evidence pointing towards it i've not heard anything else yet off the top of my head, one of the team members, TJ and Don, the Dream Team, might correct me. However, um, while we look at that, we have heard, like, or not rumors, but like suggestions of a SETI Alpha series that keep coming around now. Uh, and particularly, you'll see. I saw Nicholas Myers' videos. On the card. Yeah, interesting. The card season two touched on Project Khan. Um, mm -hmm. So, whether it's a hint towards something coming up, also it could be a great use of Brent Spiner. Um, again, <laughs> it's something to touch on there. And I'll see Nicholas um, has become very vocal recently about the SETI Alpha stuff. So, yeah. Uh, Teachers of Mind the Academy has been confirmed by Alex Kurtzman and announced by Deadline as an active development. So, Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, and it's one of those things until we actually see the bloody trailer. <laughs> it's much like <laughs> Section 31. It's in development, <laughs> but we don't quite know where it is. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's one of those cases. It's in the Delta Quadrant. It's making its way home. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's 400 years from there. So, again, it's personally like I have a sign of an Academy series. I don't particularly get excited about it. I, it's not one of the things that's selling to me. I'm not in. I would much personally much rather a new series in 21st century following a new starship give us a modern strange new worlds if that makes sense i'm like, on the same team yeah. as you the only time i came close to being interested in an academy show was with the with the tilly academy yeah. um thing that was the only time where i was like oh i could see something i see some i'm starting to see something there but yeah i i have to admit my interest isn't like heavy in that as well yeah it's and also like um the sete alpha thing that could be interesting but at the minute it doesn't personally interest me too much I would love to do some more research and learn more about it. I think Khan is obviously one of the greatest Trek villains around. And the Wrath of Khan is obviously one of the best Star Trek films, arguably. Uh, I still argue Undiscovered Country is my favourite, but hey-ho. Oh, um, we're like, oh, cool. We're I, I, time. Yeah, I, awesome. I, yeah, I think Undiscovered Country, <laughs> the ending, mwah, chef's kiss, beautiful. Um, but yeah, I think... Someone just put, oh, is it Valkyrie in the chat said, still wonder if they'll do an Academy series in the 32nd century from Tilly or following Elmo in the current time. That could be interesting. An Academy Ooh. season in the current timeline. Mm. I'm all for more Eldor personally. So, yeah, yeah definitely him given him like more. he's been shoved off of that essentially. Yeah, I think there's infinite yeah. potential for Star Trek universe right now, and they've got a ton of stuff they can do and tons of to be exciting. Um, infinite so, yeah. potential and infinite combinations. I love <laughs> well, it. Hey, <laughs> what a great way to end off this stream as well. I think we'll call it there because we're in an hour and a half now chatting away. It's, right stuff, it's been a pleasure. I look forward to our upcoming nine weeks of Stranger Worlds now, of where we get to like waffle what? on about Star Trek even more, which will be fantastic. And we're going to have some plenty of special guests. I would love to get some of the production team on board as well. Uh, we're just to pray to our lovely gods at Paramount to let us do that, please. I beg you, we are not the bad guys. <laughs> please. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> it wasn't my fault, okay? <laughs> um, so, yeah, that would be fun. So, hopefully, we can get some people on board, which would be quite nice. I would love to speak to some of the, um, some of the cast and crew and just the creatives in general. I always find speaking to the creatives of Star Trek is a pleasure. Like authors and like you know, technical team and artists and editors. It's just always really nice, so... 
Right on. Lots of good things ahead for Trek Central. Exactly. And also, you're a fantastic new component of the team as well. So we're happy to announce that. I think we're officially announcing it tomorrow as well, properly on social media. Which is very nice. So yeah, Excellent. happy days. Uh, it's been really fun. Uh, so Sahail, I think we've covered everything today. We've covered Star Trek Stranger Worlds. We have covered Star Trek Picard. Mission Chicago and all other in details as well. So hopefully you guys watching right now and also watching the VOD, which will be available here on YouTube straight away, um, have really appreciated it. And we'll be back next week at 9 p.m. BST. And the other international times I've forgotten off the top of my head, but we'll start putting those in the title and description so you know when to tune in as well. Uh, what time was the start of the stream for you, So Hale? 4 p.m. Was... Eastern Standard Time. There we time, go, yeah. So, yeah. And I, I think that is like 11 a.m. Pacific Time. Don't quote me on that one. It might be. <laughs> no, I can't remember. Uh... It would be 1 p.m. Is it 1 p.m.? Okay, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So, we're at square in the afternoons. It's after, Sunday afternoons with Trek Central in Sunday the afternoons. US. It, it's 10.30 p.m. here right now, and I've got to be up at 7.30, so... <laughs> it's, it's pretty interesting. Uh, I am determined, like, to make it to the gym tomorrow morning. I've said this, like, for four weeks now. I will go to the gym. So, tomorrow morning, you can hold me accountable next week if I actually made it there. <laughs> because <laughs> i've not done it so far uh donnie just said to end off next year uh mission seattle yes i'm hoping we get trek central to mission seattle next year i would love for us to have like a booth or a store there or even a panel and talk to people there because i think trek central is a real forefront of the star trek fan community right now i would love um i'd love to have that and talk to fans and just connect and do something um so yes plenty of stuff coming up here on trek central this year uh we're excited to talk to you all uh and have more people joining our vibrant and galaxy class crew very soon so it's been a pleasure uh, so, Hale, any final words for yourself before we end off? No, I just had a great time talking with y'all. Uh, thank you for all the awesome comments from the audience, and I look forward to next week. Excellent. Next week, we're back at 9 p.m. BST Sharp, talking about Star Trek Strange Worlds Episode 2, which I believe is called Children of a Comet, unless Paramount have changed it. But it was called that last <laughs> time. Uh, we'll see you then. Thank you for chatting and everyone else. Uh, live long and prosper, friends, and we will see you very soon. Goodbye. Bye.